Good morning. And uh, good morning to our listeners in the States. Good evening uh, to listeners from Asia. And welcome to today's webinar on women in waste management an opportunity. My name is Claire Ramonic, and I am a senior urban specialist with USAID in the Office of Land and Urban. USAID's Office of Land and Urban manages the Municipal Waste Recycling Program, which is working in the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia and Sri Lanka to improve municipal waste management practices and increase recycling. The municipal waste recycling program is working in these countries because they are together with China, some of the largest contributors to marine plastics pollution. USAID is investing in improving municipal waste management and recycling for four main reasons. First, this is an issue with major environmental and health concerns especially for the urban poor. Indiscriminate dumping of garbage kills rivers and prevents the free flows of water, causing environmental hazards and flooding. Houses and livelihoods are lost. Disease is spread through contaminated water and pests. This is a problem that intensifies with urbanization in middle income and low income countries where consumption patterns drive the increase of waste generated but local governments still do not have the capacity to manage the local solid waste. Second, this is a global environmental issue because where collection processes are poorly managed or do not even exist, a large share of waste ends up in the environment and ultimately in our oceans. In 2015, Dr. Jambeck of the University of Georgia first estimated sources of marine plastics pollution and identified many Asian countries as major contributors because they have large populations that are living in coastal areas and mostly poor waste management practices. Globally, it's estimated that today less than 10% of plastics are recycled. Most plastics end up in landfills or even worse in the natural environment. Third, waste management and recycling are, op are opportunities for increasing prosperity, trade, and job creation. The private sector is part of the solution through improving their own practices and providing financing and technology for better waste municipal waste management. Recycling can lower costs of product inputs. Many industry leaders are now looking to source recycled materials. Good waste management is a sign of a well-governed city a city where people want to live, work, and visit as a tourist. Many countries with high tourism potential have poor waste practices that limit economic growth from this sector. Fourth, with waste management being labor intensive and women dominating labor in this sector, it is a potential path towards women's empowerment. I hope we can learn from this webinar and through grants being implemented under USAID's Municipal Waste Recycling Program, how cities, and by cities here, I mean all the local actors, the local governments, NGOs, academia, and private sector, how can they work together with women entrepreneurs as they seek to improve the working conditions, compensation, and the results of waste management and recycling? So with this introduction, I would like uh, to turn the program over now to Marianne carlet gelet who's sitting next to me. She is from the Development Innovations Group, an international development firm. Marianne will briefly describe how the USAID-funded Municipal Waste Recycling Program works and introduce our panelists. Thank you. Thank you, Claire, for this introduction. The Municipal Waste Recycling Program, which was launched in 2016, is improving management of municipal waste streams through three components. First, we are providing grants of $50,000 to $250,000 to organizations with promising solutions to reduce plastics in oceans. And so far, there are six grantees. Secondly, we are evaluating the grant results and pulling lessons learned for future USAID investment. And third, we are supporting international cooperation on waste management. Now, empowering women in waste management is a key theme of the Municipal Waste Recycling Program. So today we have with us two panelists with some great insights to share on this theme. 
Lee Nyok Gwen, the founder and director of the Center for Environment and Community Research, CECR, based in Hanoi, Vietnam. Thank you, Marianne. It is my pleasure to be here today. Great to have you. And Dr. Vela Atienza, assistant professor at the University of the Philippines at Los Banos. Hi, um, thank you, Marian. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you both for being with us today. Um, Vela, let's start with you. Would you say a few words about your experience working with women in solid waste management in the Philippines and share some statistics on the sector with us? Uh, thanks, Marian. Indeed, um, I have been actively involved in the field of solid waste management for about 13 years. So I used to work as a research fellow at the Institute of Developing Economies, Japan uh, External Trade Organization, or IDE JETRO, wherein I serve as member of the uh, Economic Research Institute for uh, ASEAN and East Asia's 3R, or Reduce, Reuse, Recycle, uh, with a project uh, entitled 3R Policies for Southeast and East Asia. Currently, I'm also acting as member of the drafting committee for the state of 3Rs in Asia and the Pacific. Uh, I have written also various scientific publications on environmental governance, in, uh, informal sector in waste management and domestic and international uh, trading of recyclables, among others. And during my field researches, I have seen the significant role of the informal sector, including women, in the collection and management of uh, waste, especially in urban cities. Uh, but before uh, discussing further, let me give you a brief in introduction about our um, country situation. Based on the report of the Philippine Statistics Authority, uh, the country has exhibited a huge increase in population from 76.51 million in 2000 to 100.98 million in 2015. The urban population also grows at an increasing rate. The country has 33 highly urbanized cities, 1,489 uh, municipalities and 42,000 barangays. Barangays is the smallest political unit in the Philippines. Uh, this increasing um, growth in the population and in urbanization had contributed to the increasing generation of waste, especially in urban cities. Uh, the waste generation per person is 0.70 kilogram per day in highly urbanized cities, 0.6 kilogram in urban cities, and 0.3 kilogram in rural areas. However, in terms of recycling rate, it was reported that only about 31% are being recycled in Metro Manila uh, in 2009. Um, but there is no available data in the national level, but it is assumed that um, the recycling rate in other parts of the uh, country is even lower than Metro Manila. So thanks, Vela, for that. So to recap, a typical resident of a large city in the Philippines generates about 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 kilograms of waste per day. That's equivalent to 1.3 to 1.5 pounds per day. Um, Lee, you conducted research on the role of women in environmental protection in Vietnam. Can you talk a bit about challenges that women are facing in the sector? And can you share some statistics on Vietnam with us? Thank you, Marianne. I have been working with women in solid waste sector in Vietnam for many years. In 2015, we know that each day there were around 27, 100 tons of domestic garbage not collected by the formal sector in Vietnam. Women play a big role in collecting some of that garbage. In Hanoi, for example, it is estimated that most of the 6,000 waste pickers and buyers in the informal sectors are women. They face many challenges. First, they lack of the network because they tend to be migrants from rural area and minimal health and social protection because they tend to be undocumented workers in the cities. Second, they have minimal safety protection. Firstly, they're exposed to hazardous waste all the time. And the last, they face big discrimination from society. 
So to recap, about 27,000 tons of waste go uncollected by the formal sector on a daily basis. Clearly, the formal sector has its limitations, and some areas are completely excluded from collection. What do you make of the lack of data on women working to collect this, this waste? Um, the lack of data and research on the role of women in the waste sector in Vietnam is a key constraint to women empowerment and upward mobility. In my opinion, the lack of data is one of the reasons why women's contribution, though significant, are not yet acknowledged and reflected in the national policy in Vietnam. As a result, there are no policies that I know of that to promote sustainable livelihoods for women in the waste management sector. I feel hopeful that the grantees funded by the Municipal Waste Recycling Program, such as my organization, will generate data on men and women in this sector, and that this data will help us come up with a gender-sensitive waste management policies for Hanoi and other cities in Vietnam. Well, I look forward to that. Um, moving to the next topic, Vela, what models seem to work in the Philippines to empower women in solid waste management, and how do we know that these models are really working? Okay. Um, yes, Marian. There are really uh, great, uh, many great models uh, in the Philippines. Uh, one example is the Kilos Foundation Environmental Multipurpose Cooperative. Uh, this is an organization composed of 250 members, and among them, uh, 244 are women, and only six are men. This is uh, located in Ugong, uh, Basic City. Basic City is a highly urbanized city in Metro Manila. Although the members of this cooperative are not formally waste <coughs> speakers, uh, their experience provides a good example on the potentials of waste as a resource for alternative livelihood and uh, the benefits of formalizing uh, the waste recycling activities. Uh, most of these women uh, had previously belonged to the jobless sector in the community. So during that time, um, about 2000, the Dem Barangay Aliha, um, Chairman Alejandro Santiago initiated the development of various products from uh, DOIFA. So these are uh, DOIFA. So these are used for uh, artificial juices. Um, uh, Vela, can you hold those a little can higher? Up? Here? Hello. Can you hold those a little higher yeah. up? Great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So this is used for artificial juices and uh, this is made of uh, triple laminated cellulose. They are non-biodegradable and they are not bought uh, for junk, uh, by junk shops for recycling. Thus, many of them uh, ended up in the dump sites or um, sanitary uh, or sanitary landfill. So what they did uh, with doy packs and uh, colored magazines uh, as raw materials, they turned them into a fashionable product such as bags. Uh, shoes, office, uh, and school supplies, necklaces, among others. So a livelihood seminar was also conducted to the members of the foundation. Uh, for the year 2002, Kilos bought about 3 million 100 pieces of um, doy packs. So at 200 pieces of doy packs a kilo, uh, this total for about 15.4 tons of garbage recycled. And in terms of livelihood, um, this is very important because at present, uh, the, the workers uh, for the in-house, because they have workers uh, working in the in-house or those working at home, for in-house workers, they can earn about 350 pesos per day or about 7 USD per day or a total of about 154 USD monthly for in-house workers. While those working at home with other members of the family, they can earn higher uh, even higher for about 3,000 to 7,000 a week or about 240 to 560 USD monthly. So this income is comparable or even higher to office workers or factory workers because 
they don't need to pay for transportation costs, and they don't need to buy expensive clothes for work. Uh, as a cooperative, uh, they can also apply for grants or loans. And through the Department of Trade and Industry, their recycled products also um, uh, got foreign market. So at rest, uh, for many years until now, they have been uh, exporting their products to many countries, such as US, um, Japan, Germany, uh, Singapore, among others. <laughs> so what are the lessons we can uh, gain from their experience? First, we noticed that this innovation was initiated by the local government unit. Therefore, this has contributed to the success of this because it has the authority and support of the local government leaders. Uh, second, we can also see that um, the significant roles of the other sectors, such as the private or financial sectors, training institutions, and others. Um, also, it has become sustainable because their work do not only provide livelihood, but it also contributes to the cleanliness of the community. So, um, it provides environmental, economic, and social benefits. And last but not the least, we can see also from their experience the importance of forming the informal sector to a formal organization. So this kind of a, uh, initiative should be promoted. Their experience shows also that waste, if only it could be managed properly, will not be a problem. And forming the informal sector of, uh, into an organization or, or cooperative can really make a great difference. Thank you. Great. Yeah, that's a great model. Thanks for sharing that, Bella. While we're on the subject of metrics, I just wanted to share that USAID has a master indicator list with eight cross-cutting indicators for gender equality, women's empowerment, and other gender-related topics. And two of those, I think, are particularly relevant to women's empowerment and solid waste management. One is the percentage of female participants in US government assisted programs designed to increase access to productive economic resources, uh, assets, credit, income, or, or employment, for example. And another one I find particularly relevant is the number of legal instruments drafted, proposed, or adopted with US government assistance designed to promote gender equality or non-discrimination against girls or women at the national or subnational level. The World Bank also has a really useful tool called Making Urban Development Work for Women and Men, Tools for Task Teams 2010. And it includes some useful indicators that can be applied to solid waste management and to women's empowerment. Um, one is the time spent by men, women, girls, and boys disposing of trash. And another one is satisfaction of male and female customers with solid waste management services, convenience, effectiveness, and affordability. So I just wanted you to be aware of, of those indicators. But at this point, it's time to shift gears to the final topic of this webinar, which is how the Municipal Waste Recycling Program can make a difference for women in the sector. And Lee, I think your organization, CECR, being one of the first grantees, is a really good example because you're working with a women's union. So could you tell us about your model, Oceans Without Plastic, and what you're hoping to achieve beyond reducing the amount of plastics entering marine environments? Well, the project on ocean is a plastic community recycling program for strong community and green city. It's addressing all the challenges we talked about today. First, the project is empowering women to pioneer community participation in municipal solid waste management. With the funding from the United States government, we are going to scale up the women-led model of community-based plastic collection and recycling programs in two districts in Da Nang, a coastal city of 1.3 million people. We are working with women union in Da Nang, which spearheaded a source solid waste segregation scheme. Women can earn much needed revenue as a result. Secondly, together with the Women Union, we will facilitate a strategic partnership between recycling centers and the city of Da Nang Solid Waste Department 
for better coordination and implementation of waste management. Together with two policy forums and a multi-stakeholder recycling network, this will inform will form the basis for better recognize women contributions to waste management in city policy and to formalize the informal sector. Firstly, the ocean is our plastic project to generate data on women contribution to waste management. We are conducting a comprehensive study and data collection <coughs> women-led waste segregation and recycling model. This will shine a light on how empowering women in waste sector can lead to economic benefits and reduce cost of waste management for the municipalities. This data set and lessons learned will help us to advocate for policy to improve municipal waste management and to promote sustainable livelihoods for women in the waste sector. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Lee. We really look forward to witnessing lots of improvements in Da Nang for women and men working in the solid waste management sector. And uh, we really hope that CECR can bridge the data gap in Da Nang, Vietnam with this Oceans Without Plastics program. At this point, we have a little bit time, a little bit of time left for questions and answers. So I'm going to turn it over to the callers. Okay, well, I have a first question here. Um, what has been done to create income for unpaid women in the solid waste management sector? Would anybody like to answer that question? Vela, Lee? Can you repeat the question? The question is, what has been done to create income for unpaid women in the solid waste management sector? So we can take that either for the Philippines or for Vietnam, or if you're aware of models in other countries, you're welcome to explain those as well. Well, um, in Vietnam, uh, maybe Vela, you go ahead, yeah. yes. Uh, me, okay. Yeah, um, in the Philippines, um, actually um, it's not only for women, but also for the informal waste sector. We have this national framework for the nation, a national framework for the informal sector in waste management uh, in 2009. So we have this initiative. Um, it aims to really include the work or the contribution of this sector, uh, but, uh, especially also the women or to the waste management system, so that their work will really be recognized. Their work will be, uh, like what I said, um, paid and um, acknowledged. At the same time, uh, so that uh, they will not only remain in poverty, but instead, uh, how can they um, work be improved and their lives will be upgraded? So, um, I think the main uh, um, the main aim or vision of this uh, um, national framework for the informal sector, and that includes women, is to really include uh, and formalize, recognize the role of this informal sector to the waste management system. Thank you for addressing the question. Um, we have another caller asking, what are some of the challenges faced by small enterprises in entering the solid waste management sector? And are there any government policies supporting or suppressing the ability of small businesses to take part in this sector? And related to that, what about um, spe specific, uh, specific help to women-owned small businesses. 
about in Vietnam. Do you hear me? Yes, very well. Yeah, okay. Well, in Vietnam, um, the many small and medium enterprises start working on this sector, actually. It, so far, it's really beginning in Vietnam, but um, many small medium enterprises are uh, like as a private uh, own a small company by business or uh, by some initiatives. Um, the government actually still doesn't have really good policy to support those sectors, but that kind of, you know, organic growth of this organization, this uh, business, because of the huge amount of recycling waste like uh, available in, in Vietnam. Um, the informal, uh, like uh, the waste pick, uh, pickers and uh, mostly women working on that actually collect like uh, uh, recycling wastes and sell to those small medium enterprises. And that create kind of, you know, um, a little bit unorganized, but it starts like growing. So that's the um, uh, that's the, the and the challenges that these small enterprises facing is they are not recognized and they don't get any kind of policy to support them or like they lack of the um, investment uh, funding or they lack particularly they lack of technology that to support them to process this uh, recycling waste. So mm -hmm. we think that, you know, in the coming, in, in future, in the near future, it's very important to identify those challenges and to find a way um, uh, to promote um, uh, this business and to get some formal recognition and also to find a way to provide funding and provide like uh, the uh, technology to those enterprises. Great, thank you, Lee. Uh, we have another caller asking about what steps have been taken to incentivize women to be active in the solid waste management sector. And uh, he refers to a study that suggests that in exchange for solid waste recyclables, um, in this study or this model, women have been provided with vegetables or toilet paper. Have you heard of this model? Unfortunately, the, the, uh, the specific model is not cited, so I don't know which country it's from. But um, have you heard of this model or similar models and, and what has been done in your country to incentivize women to be active in the sector if they already aren't active, if they aren't already active in the sector? Some form of uh, non-monetary compensation, sort of, or Incentives. Yes, exactly. Uh, I have not heard about this, uh, you know, uh, incentive. Do you have, is it like uh, in, in Vietnam or in Philippines? No. I Tell us. There's such a model in the Philippines. Have you heard of this kind of model? And what do you think of it? Um, uh, there's not exactly the same, but I think it's one of the initiative, uh, for example, in the Philippines is we really like what I have shared earlier is um, the we encourage this informal sector to really form into an organization because uh, as individuals, they don't have the voice, they don't have access to resources, and they are not even recognized. But if they are um, formed into an organization, this is what they really encourage, the government is really encouraging, is uh, because as an organization, it's easy for them to manage, and it's easy, uh, they, as an organization, they can also um, ask or request or apply for funds. And then also they have also the privilege to attend uh, training, to have some, uh, to improve livelihood, to improve their livelihood, and mm -hmm. to improve uh, their lives not only in terms of um, economic but even socially. So uh, that's one of the initiatives in the Philippines to 
encourage them to formalize in the organization through the help of the different sectors of the uh, society, like the academe, um, the NGOs. NGOs is very uh, active in the Philippines also. They play a significant role usually, and they provide training to this um, sector. And uh, like what I mentioned in the Kilos uh, experience, they have also conducted a livelihood seminar so that in this way, they can improve their products. They can, they can make their waste management activities more systematic. Okay, great, thank you. Um, one caller has just shared some reading recommendations on the sector. One is called the Sustainable Solid Waste Management Towards an Inclusive Society integration of the informal sector, uh, which discusses the role of informal recycling in Bandung, Indonesia. And then another recommended re reading is integration of the informal sector into municipal solid waste management in the Philippines. What does it need? So perhaps we can post those on the Urban Links website along with the, the recording of this webinar. Any other questions? I would like to hear more from Lee and maybe later from Vela about the particular characteristics of, uh, of the waste pickers. Um, you mentioned that, uh, that these, these, these people, um, and mostly they're women, are really um, actually, they're not regular, um, how to say, registered urban uh, um, uh, inhabitants. They uh, are either recent migrants or they may be, from what I understand, maybe even seasonal migrants. Um, so I, how does that really affect their ability um, uh, to, to improve their lives? How does it, um, you know, how do we need, how do you rather, as an organization, need to take that into consideration in, um, in working with them? What are the difficulties because of their, what I guess we might call their marginal status? Can you reflect on that, uh, Lee? Uh, tell us more about that in Vietnam, and then maybe later that Vela can share what the situation is in the Philippines. Yeah. Well, in Vietnam, uh, most like uh, uh, waste pickers are women, and they are migrants from rural areas to cities, like in Hanoi. You know, Hanoi is a big city, or Ho Chi Minh cities. So many women are working in this sector and they most come here like, uh, you know, they, they don't stay in the cities so they are not registered as urban. So they citizens and they are not entitled to any like a social benefits. They are not entitled to the um, 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 medical benefits, for example, and they have very unstable incomes. So all this make their life very difficult. And in our project, we would like to, you know, use all research and data and to bring this into the attention of the community, for example, as a district level, you know, to find some way that these workers can be recognized and can get some, you know, can get some social benefits. They can contribute some, you know, they can get some like a insurance, for example, or some medical um, uh, benefits. It, it is, now it's important to advocate this work to the authorities, but is a district level or as a commu community level or even, or even at the national level. But um, that will be a big challenge because the, the, the issues sometimes uh, have been ignored by, you know, it's always like a behavior, like you have bigger policies, you have bigger issues to, to, um, uh, to work on, and these are, you know, not really that important issues. So with our project, we would like to come up with the data, with the evidence, we will like advocate for the work that these need to be recognized because of cities, because we cannot live with all garbage, right? So these people help us to clean up, to 
um, uh, to collect all, all this garbage. This is a real work and it's a really hard work. And most women working on this sector, they need to be recognized. And we hope that with our research studies and with the forums that we are organizing, we can bring this to the attention of the authorities and of the governments. And hopefully we can recommend the concrete policies that toward this, uh, uh, you know, women workers in this sector. And, and that's, that's really our hope that through our project and we can create kind of network of people working on this one. And we can have like a policy forums, you know, to bring all these issues to the attention of the government. And hopefully that we can create kind of policies to help workers in this sector to be recognized and to get the benefits, social benefit or medical benefits they deserve. And probably also, you know, some insurance for the, like, uh, those people, they don't have like a retirement salary, you know. They, so, so all this need to be brought into the attention and to be discussed at the policy level. Excellent. Vela, any comments on this question, this topic? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, in addition to what uh, Dr. Lee uh, has mentioned, uh, it's also the same principle in the Philippines. Uh, we really want them to recognize the work of this informal sector and to really integrate them to the formal waste uh, management system. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the Philippines also, uh, yes, there are many migrants. Most of this, uh, especially in Metro Manila, uh, based on my interview with the um, man manager of one um, landfill, they really, uh, before it is an open dump site, they really um, see that the number of waste pickers increase, especially during um, December or the Christmas season in the Philippines. So because many of this um, informal, uh, many of this uh, informal waste pickers are coming from the rural areas to urban areas. So it's a challenge because, um, yeah, because since they are migrants, so they don't have the legal, uh, they are illegal, um, squatters or they are really not a legal um, uh, resident in the community so it's really a challenge in each local government unit so but in uh, for humanizing them into organization like what we did in one of uh, in our city here in Laguna um, it's a, uh, near uh, Metro Manila also um, one of the requirements is to really be a legal um, resident of the community so in this sense, um, it is important that they are um, um, legally uh, residing in the community. So in, uh, in that sense, the, those who are not uh, legally uh, residing in the community cannot be included. Um, but uh, we are trying to um, think on, on how, I mean, on this important, but as of now, we are uh, having problem or this is one of the challenges. But for those who are really in the community, uh, we are really in, uh, encouraging them to be part of the organization to formalize the system and to formalize their uh, rec uh, recycling activities. In in Metro Manila, in Payatas, they have this also some uh, like a cooperative also. So the members of the cooperative are also given like training. So uh, even their kids. Um, so that they will not stay or in that kind of work. Uh, so they are trying to partner also with other uh, private sector so that um, they are also supporting their, uh, I mean, they are trying to help on how uh, they can have some, uh, they can go to, um, to have access also to education so that um, in the future, they will have a better um, opportunity instead of just um, doing this kind of activities. So aside from formalizing their activities or making it um, uh, more systematic, they have also other activities like sports activities or some education so that um, uh, in the future, in the, uh, they, will, they will not remain in poverty. Excellent. Did you have another question? Well, on the other side, um, one is the workers. Um, 
the other side I'm thinking of, of potential entrepreneurs um, in creating recycled products. I love the example from the Philippines of using these doy pots, who are, which are really, because I think in generally in the sector, these single use packaging, they're just a real problem. A lot of times, whether it's from candy bars or juices or whatever, they're, they're things that are very light, they fly away, um, they're difficult uh, to collect, and that's why they end up often in the water and eventually in the oceans. And so creating, a, creating these products, you mentioned shoes and bags, things that um, people in other countries are happy to buy because, and actually sort of promoting them as exclusive products, the ultimate things that are made out of these recycled products, I think that's very promising. And I was just curious, um, if, uh, if if there's anything like that in Vietnam too. I mean, I what about who is designing these products? You know, is this a place where where women can also, if this is much higher up on the uh, on the scale, we're not talking about the people collecting, but also a role for women in really being innovative in designing products that can use recycled materials, especially these materials that are more difficult to use for, um, for other purposes, for example. Mm -hmm. Lee, do you know if, um, or maybe you can just tell about women entrepreneurs in Vietnam in general. Um, are, are women uh, uh, producing, uh, uh, are, are they leaders in, in the economic transformation in your country, in Vietnam? Yeah. Well, you know that Vietnamese women are very famous um, in terms of the, uh, being creative and being, you know, like a, a, a the main like a um, um, force for um, the main labor in in production as well. So in terms of the recycling and 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 uh, waste um, um, uh, treatment, um, actually we have very good example of one women entrepreneurs, you know, in uh, Quảng Nam, near to Đà Nẵng, actually part uh, in, in between Đà Nẵng and Quảng Nam. And her name is Miss Hồng. And she is like a normal um, householder person. And she just noticed that in her communities, there are so many organic waste, like her, um, um, too many organic waste and it became nuisance for the community. So she initiated uh, the, um, uh, you know, the new product uh, that she collect all this organic waste and fermented it and make it into liquid um, washing uh, liquid and um, like a liquid for washing. Uh, dishes, like a dish washing liquid. Yeah, and she started, I mean, on her own, she somehow learned a kind of chemical process of that. She make ferment of this uh, organic waste and she started in her house. And then she started with some uh, neighbors. And after like a three, four years now, she organized one uh, like a enterprise in her community and she has 80 householders working with her. So 80 householders, they collect like a, they fermented it in big like a um, suit. And then when after a month, you know, the liquid is ready. So they transfer all this liquid to her uh, enterprise and they start like making a little bit, you know, the process of um, 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 cleaning it and make it like more effective. And now they are selling these products and she helps this 80 household earn an income about $200 a month by just producing um, uh, this uh, like a, a, a dishwashing uh, liquid and um, it's, it's quite like uh, inspiring, you know, seeing like a, a lady and she didn't have like an engineering background and she learned by herself. And um, the good thing is that the community is now without organic waste, which is a really nuisance in Vietnam because it's hot and all this, you know, uh, 
a little pass on that and this is and now the community is clean they have been able to reduce about like 80 percent of organic waste in their community so it is very good actually she has been uh, nominated for the uh, women enterprise uh, uh, prize last year in vietnam and i have uh, visited her and i have uh, seen this process and it's very inspiring. And we know that there are many, many women start like a small enterprise in uh, their like communities. And um, um, I'm sure that, you know, there's a, we, we need to, what they need is like a technology transfer. What they need is more knowledge and more suggestions. So, uh, so we also see it as like a see, trend to help women to be empowered, to be in, in more like a higher level uh, of the, this like a supply chain for waste uh, recycling and reuse. Yeah. That's wonderful. I love to hear these stories of women leading innovation and uh, creating a business that is financially sustainable. That's wonderful. Vela, do you have more examples from the Philippines of women designing products or um, just the entrepreneurs that uh, may find opportunities in this sector? Hey, hey yes. yes. Um, um, is it anything? Hello. Yeah. Um, I just want to add that, um, yeah, in the Philippines, uh, we really don't. Um, I don't know exactly other, um, like specifically for women, but um, because most of them are, they are mixed with men and women, and but many of them also are, we can notice that many members are women. Um, because um, like for example, um, in Kilos, they have this, um, they, their economic um, benefits, uh, for example, they can have uh, this, uh, support the education of their children. And then um, they also have this, um, because when I talk with the president of one organization, they mentioned that they are instilling the love for work, that they will not only um, do this because they need it for economic reasons, but they have to love their work. They have to make this um, kind of activity, like um, they have to produce I mean, the, uh, they have to produce a quality, I mean, a good quality, uh, so that it will be sustainable. Because um, they've made, there are many um, informal group of or organization, but usually it didn't last because it's only, uh, uh, what do you call this, um, just for economic livelihood. Because they have this also, like a Mother Earth Foundation, uh, they are providing um, training for the informal sector. Um, so not only for women, but dominant uh, dominant members are women. Uh, they are providing trainings, but uh, their seminar is composed of the first is in um, the inner the inner one the social. Um, they have to understand first why they have to uh, do waste recycling. Uh, why um, you know that inner one, not only the economic one. So they um, they cannot go to the second part of the seminar if they don't understand uh, the first part, which is more on the um, uh, social, uh, the inner uh, significance or value of doing the waste recycling. So they have to understand first. So before they go to the entrepreneur uh, level. So they have this, um, uh, this is the Mother Earth Foundation. So they are uh, helping also different um, local government organizations because many of the local government units, they want to improve, uh, I mean, they, uh, the waste management uh, system in their community, but they don't have the technical training, uh, they don't have the technical capacity, and they don't have the human resources. So the role of these uh, members uh, of this organization, they, they are filling up the gap in this, uh, look, uh, for the local government unit. So they are providing this training so that this uh, can also uh, uh, turn this uh, waste recycling into a small inter uh, entrepreneurs. 
Excellent. Um, you, you mentioned the president of the, you mentioned actually Mother Earth Foundation. I actually happened to have met their president last time I was in the Philippines. And she talked to me at length about the importance of composting and the effect that that can have on solid waste management costs at the municipal level. What role do you see women playing in convincing households and communities to increase the amount of composting and how can that help empower their role in communities? Can you repeat? I, I, I cannot hear well. The last sure. the, the, My question was, what role do you see women playing in increasing and convincing communities to, to do more composting? And how can that help empower those women? Yeah, um, because um, many um, in the Philippines, um, uh, the women, um, all, although um, Many are already working, but all, uh, but even in rural or even in urban areas, this informal sector, uh, they couldn't uh, find a regular job. So uh, by uh, the role of, uh, it, it encourages the other members or the other um, women in the community because if they see the benefit of being into an organization, and then uh, they are practicing, you know, the women are in, in the Philippines, like um, you are like uh, light in the house. So they can uh, share it with the other members of the organization. They can share it with other uh, neighbors. So, you know, the word, word of mouth, I mean, they, yeah, so the power of, um, because usually they just, um, uh, because in Philippines, they, uh, most of these women, they are talking with each other, so they have this uh, sharing of information. So uh, by by um, practicing what they preach and by applying from the training, then other under society will encourage to do the same. Great. Thank you so much, Vela, for, for sharing those thoughts. We are unfortunately running out of time. So um, at this point, I'd like to invite Claire to say a few closing words. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you so much for moderating this session. And um, thank you um, for our panelists. Uh, and uh, we have in the Philippines, remember, we have uh, Dr. Vela Tienza from the University of the Philippines in Los Banos. And, in Vietnam, we've had uh, Li Noa Nguyen, the founder and the director of the Center for Environment and Community Research, known as CECR, which is one of the first grantees under USAID's Municipal Waste Recycling Program. Um, I want to thank you because really this discussion did help get at what we, what I think is a very interesting topic, the intersection of the different actors at the local level. Dr. Uh, Bella was just saying how the local governments don't have the capacity to do the different pieces. Um, there's the NGOs who are bringing in the training. There's the uh, entrepreneurs, which now we're seeing more women who are creating private sector um, solutions as part of the solid waste management uh, situation and, and creating and helping to feed in um, to the recycling that we want to see more and more of and, and some innovative recycled products. So I really appreciated hearing these uh, stories from both the Philippines and the Vietnam and it was really interesting. Now I want to spend one moment to mention that this information will be on urbanlinks.org. That's urban-links.org. And um, if there's anybody listening there who either uh, is from an organization that would like to apply for a grant from the Municipal Waste Recycling Program or, or who wants to share with um, this information with networks, we have just posted um, a revised annual program statement. And that gives information on, um, on what uh, we are looking for in terms of grant applications that we are supporting through this program. So you can find that on the USAID website that is urban-links.org slash MWRP, which stands for Municipal Waste Recycling Program. And we will also share that 
with you. So um, we uh, really appreciate the discussion uh, today. And uh, thank you again to the panelists. Thank you to Marianne for the uh, moderation. And we, uh, we just hope for a, a cleaner world and a better world for, uh, especially for the women involved in making it that case. Thank you. Thank you.